and Shalom. Kahalo Yehavo Ba Yehavo Shai Ba Hashem Kakudash. All right, uh, just gonna do, uh, you know, driving home. I want to do a little video just to talk about. Uh, you know, I've been reading the uh, the book, The Devastation of the Indies. I've been reading it already for about a week. You know, I keep going back and rereading certain parts. And uh, <clears throat> the devastation of the Indies was during a time that uh, Esau was uh, coming, you know, to the land of the north. All right, but it started in Hispaniola. All right, then it moved from you know, Hispaniola to San Juan, Jamaica, and then it started moving up even more. So it's all written so really from South America to Mexico to uh, uh, America, and then you know parts of Canada, because that's where all of uh, Israel was at. All right, and so during that time, you had on the on the in that book, you had five provinces in in Haiti, uh, in Haiti. All right, which they which E called it Hispaniola because it means little Spain. But uh, Haiti was divided up into you know five parts, five provinces. And you had uh, you had five chiefs, five chief Israelites, basically good rulers, little kings. You know, they would identify them as caciques. And it tells the account of uh, each province that he went to. Now the thing about Esau, man, was his his nature was not hidden when he was coming over to pillage. Uh, ultimately, it was to pillage Israel. When you read in that book, it talks about how uh, Esau's objective was to murder the Israelites, all right, the Native American Indians, you Latin tribes, all right. It literally says it. The the, the book of uh, the Devastation of the Indies by Bartolome de las Casas literally is a book all about exposing the so-called white man and his and what he did. And now you look into today, and Esau is hiding it, all right? He hides and covers who he really is. Now you still got slavery. The scriptures tell you in Baruch, the third chapter, the eighth verse, it says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity for a reproach and a curse. We're still in slavery. The thing is, Esau has taken all the resources, all the gold. He's taken everything that, that could create a nation besides the, the, the people. And now he has our people subjected fully unto him. And that's why I wanted to make this lesson because uh, I was thinking about Isaiah, the 30th chapter, the first verse, you know, where it says to woe unto the rebellious children which seek after a council, but not of me. And it's talking about the council that they go to, which is America. They go to the system. They go to Esau for all things. And that was Esau, ultimately Esau's goal to, uh, to captivate and to enslave the children of Israel. And you see his objective, his agenda right now, it's about to all come back. Yeah, we've been in captivity. Yeah, we've been uh, uh, under the curse of our, and under the uh, enemy. But Jacob is so simple because the reason why I brought that book up is man, Jacob did not learn in the accounts of dealing with the Spaniards. Each province that Esau went to they, uh, they would just destroy, pillage, rot, raid, murder, everything, sport, killings, everything. They wouldn't waste no time. They would they would settle, they'd meet with the caciques, and then they would kill them the very same day. And so each time there, were, there, there was already reports going to the other provinces, to these other caciques, of what was going on. Like, hey man, this, this fucking red demon is you know, killing us. Now there was a, uh, there was a, a, a man uh, uh, by the name of Guacardia, Guacardia, Guariona, Guarionix, Guariona Jex, something like I, It's hard to say, but he was the father of uh, Guarionix, who was the first cacique of, uh, uh, the, the province of Magua because you had five provinces in Hispaniola you had Magua, Marion, Maguana, Zaraguay, and Higüey 
And uh, Gorionic's father, which these were the Tainos, uh, he was a prophet. He was essentially a prophet because he had a vision of Esau coming from uh, Spain over here to Hispaniola, or coming over to the you know the land of the north. And uh, I believe there's even accounts where certain of the Israelite natives uh, they warned the people to not do certain things, to not spark that that hate from Esau. So the the point I'm getting at, man, is like Jacob. We we've tried doing it other ways. All right, we even tried submitting fully unto the enemy, and it did not work. You had, uh, you had, it's like if I'm yelling, man. I don't know if this works, but also, you know, I'm in the car. But in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the cacique of Marion, which was Guacanagari, he was an informant for Esau. He was a sellout, basically. And they repaid him by killing him. They raped his wife in front of him. And then they drowned him, I believe. There's different stories that one would just, you know, they just took a sword and killed him. The other one is that they drowned him. But, man, <laughs> we haven't learned our lesson to this very day. Two-thirds of our people still go to the system in a hope that they're going to be able to somehow flourish or prosper or produce or become, you know, prosperous in the society and it's not going to happen man no matter what you do man this devil will always be your your arch rival your art your arch nemesis all right because again he is the devil and his ways are 100 million percent contrary to our powers ways the way that we never went about all right i think uh, i believe in jeremiah it says for we love to wonder, man. We 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 tried every other way under under the heavens, but Yahweh Shemashah's way. And look where it got you, man. It got you killed. It got you uh, blind, man. When you when you coming back to the kingdom, you're gonna that that filthiness and all that obscurity, uh, all that obscurity is gonna be taken away from your eyes, man. And you're gonna see how you're gonna be ashamed. The scriptures talk about how in today's time. Y'all don't even blush. Y'all don't feel no type of guilt. You know, you don't, you don't, you know, think about like, man, am I doing something wrong? Am I living the right way? And is this how I'm supposed to be acting as a person? You just, you just, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a natural, natural instinct for you to be sottish. But when you come in the kingdom, man, you're gonna see fully how 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 blinded and, and ultimately you gave in, and that's gonna be a shame. And a sorrow to you. The scriptures tell you, man, you're going to be perpetually sorrowful, man. You're going to be forever sorry, basically. That's why, hey, I like to throw this out there because it is a good thing. But you know, on a on a uh, on a uh, at a uh, exhortation level, the reason why we got to be immortal is because the Lord it, it's going to require an, an eternity an eternity for us to to thank Yahweh Shemeshah for what He's done. No amount of praise and thanksgiving can come out of our mouths, man, for what the Lord has done for us. The scripture I've been highly quoting lately, man, Psalms 124 and 1 verse 2. If it were not for the Lord, man, we would be consumed. We would be, we would be dead. We wouldn't be a nation. But like it says in Psalms 106, nevertheless, the Lord regarded our prayers and our cries and affliction. So you should be thankful. But, hey, man, like, this whole time that we've been under our enemy's foot, you know, you know, I mean, like it, it, it brought us to a, a pitiful condition. You know, Isaiah tells you, man, like truly, this is a people robbed and spoiled, and Esau <laughs> truly robbed and spoiled us. Man, the scriptures talk about him being so treacherous and cruel, a shameless nation. Um, that same book, Devastation of the Indies, talks about um, how Esau, Esau was fearless against the Most High. He has no fear. The scriptures tell you that in Psalms. Like, for real, man, that book literally, man, outside the scriptures, man, that book is an all exposure of Esau, man. 
And if I'm not mistaken, well, because Bartolome de la Casas, man, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was a Spaniard. He was an Edomite. But I don't know, man. It's questionable because no Edomite would put himself out like that. So I don't know. I mean, I would have to confirm it. I'm not sure. But this man turned down a lot of, I mean, the scriptures talk about bringing our enemies to be at peace with us. You know, uh, make it, making them. And Esau will snitch himself out because Esau is like that. But still, man. Um, man, so much was done to us, and even listening to the, the to the damn devil still got us nowhere, man. So, the, hey, coming out of it, <coughs> excuse me, coming out of it, man, you should turn back to Yahweh Shem Shai. You know, put off these wicked ways, man, the ways of the devil of Esau, and do what's right, man. Come back to your Father, your power, your Lord. Yahweh and Yahweh Shah, they're not God, not Jesus. They'll deliver you, man. They'll get you out of a pitiful condition. You know? So, that's all I really want to say, man. Like, stop listening to this motherfucker, man, because he, he, he's going he's gonna to lead you into a ditch. This whole, uh, the whole uh, vid-19, hey, man, that's all a, that's all a trap. It's a trap, you know? That's what it is. So put you on the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, and live. But with that, I'm gonna go to end it. I wanna give all glory and praise and honor to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kakwadash. All right, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. So I can for, for to do that, put that in the introduction. But uh, again, double honors, honors and blessings, greetings to the elect. But you have about Smith Sharp Rock and Thumb, Kwame Shala Shalawam.